Edmund I was born in 921 or 922 in Wessex, England, as the second son of King Edward the Elder and his third wife, Eid Gifu of Kent. He had an older brother named Athelstan, who became king after their father's death. Little is known about Edmund's early life, but he likely received a typical education for a royal prince, including instruction in Latin, history, and military strategy. When Athelstan died in 939, Edmund was still a young man, likely around 18 or 19 years old. Despite his youth, he was able to assert his claim to the throne and was crowned King of England. One of the biggest challenges Edmund faced during his reign was the ongoing threat of Viking raids on England. These attacks had been a constant problem for several generations, and Edmund was determined to find a way to repel them. In 940, Edmund made a treaty with Olaf Guthfrithson, the Viking King of Dublin, which temporarily halted the Viking raids on England. The treaty was beneficial for both sides, as it allowed Olaf to consolidate his power in Ireland while giving Edmund a respite from the Viking attacks. However, in 941, the Vikings launched a surprise attack on Northumbria and killed the king, prompting Edmund to retaliate with a campaign against the Vikings in the north. The campaign was successful, and Edmund was able to push the Vikings back and establish his authority over Northumbria. In addition to the Viking threat, Edmund faced internal threats to his rule, particularly from his own half-brother, Edwig. Edwig was dissatisfied with his position as a younger son and likely felt that he deserved a greater share of the kingdom. In 944, Edwig rebelled against Edmund and was exiled. However, he later returned and was pardoned by Edmund, who hoped to avoid further conflict within the royal family. Despite the challenges he faced, Edmund was a capable and effective king. He worked to strengthen the military and administrative structures of the kingdom and introduced new laws and policies to improve governance. Edmund was also known for his piety and his devotion to the Christian faith. He was a generous patron of churches and monasteries and worked to spread Christianity throughout the kingdom. Edmund continued the policy of unification and consolidation of the English kingdom that had been started by his brother Athelstan. One of Edmund's most significant achievements was his introduction of a new coinage system. The new coins were more standardized and consistent than the previous system, which helped to strengthen the economy and facilitate trade. Edmund was married to a woman named Elfgifu, but little is known about their relationship. It is possible that she was a member of the royal household or a noblewoman from another family. Edmund and Elfgifu had two sons, both of whom would become kings of England, Edwig and Edgar. Edwig succeeded Edmund as king, but his reign was short-lived and marked by conflict and controversy. Edgar, Edmund's younger son, would go on to become one of the most successful and well-regarded kings of England. Edmund is remembered for his piety, his administrative reforms, and his support of the church. Edmund died in 946, at the age of 24 or 25. The circumstances of his death are unclear, but it is believed that he was stabbed by a robber, while attending a feast. He was buried at Glastonbury Abbey. Edmund's death was a significant loss for England, as he had shown himself to be a capable and effective ruler during his brief reign. His early death left the kingdom vulnerable to internal and external threats, and it would be several years before stability was fully restored. Edmund was succeeded by his older son, Edwig, who was only a teenager at the time of his coronation. Despite his short reign, Edmund I made several important contributions to the development of the English kingdom. His efforts to strengthen the military and administrative structures of the kingdom helped to create a more cohesive and unified nation, and his introduction of a new coinage system facilitated trade and commerce. Edmund's legacy is also reflected in the achievements of his sons, who both went on to become kings of England.